Yeah. Right. Okay. I hope that, that makes sense. It's super great. I think one of the things, and I think it's going to overlap a little bit with your next theodicy, but it's helpful for me, like thinking about the problem of evil. Um, and one of the ways to really help me is thinking about like, when we be like theism, like just grant for, for a second that like, well, theism really doesn't have any explanation for like why the state of affairs is this way rather than this way. Well, it seems like naturalism or atheism is going to have the same exact problem. Like there's no reason given atheism that we have like this world versus a world of like maybe like five, like hydrogen and hydrogen floating around or maybe like protons and neutrons are sticking together or really any other like state of affairs. Um, so I think it's a super yeah. helpful thing when you're looking at the problem of evil is to really think about like, well, given naturalism, would we expect a world like this? And, you know, it just seems very unlikely as well, even if you were going to say that like theism was in the same boat. So Yeah. Yeah, because one of the things that I've, that I sort of noticed is um, like, even if it's, even if it, even if this sort of world is unlikely on theism, well, how is it more likely on naturalism? Like exactly, where, yeah. where is that going to play into there? And I think one of the issues I think a lot of people don't understand is even if, even if it's like, you know, 1% probability that we're going to live in this happy universe on theism, as long as that's higher than on naturalism. So like, let's say if it's 0.5% on naturalism, versus one percent on theism well theism is going to have like double the advantage yeah. right even when you have like honestly a... probably a lot worse for naturalists like there's a lot more than like 200 different universes that could have existed um so i think yeah it's gonna be a lot worse for them